Hi, right, so this video is meant to show um, the steps for the protocol for doing tumor segmentation from the BRATS dataset for the ITK SNAP validation paper. So before I start, a couple of things just to remind you of. Make sure that you're using the right version. It should be 3.4.0 and not any other version. And also make sure that you time your segmentation. So you should be timing from the moment that you start the open ITK snap until the moment that you close it and then record that time in a spreadsheet. Okay, so we're going to start by opening a workspace. All of the BRATS datasets have been organized into these workspaces. Uh, they have an ITK snap extension. So just opening it is enough to load all the datasets uh, side by side as we need to. I'm going to blow up my window to be full screen. And now we can start the segmentation. So the first step is to just set up the region of interest uh, for the snake segmentation. So go to the snake tool. Here um, I had a, already uh, looked at this data set before, so I think it's already been at least partially set up but I can tighten my bounding box. Um, this is not crucial, it just uh, reduces wasted screen space and wasted memory, but it's not going to make any major difference for the actual tumor segmentation, what your region of interest is. So once we select the region of interest, click Segment 3D, and just some very quick configuration. So we want to go to Classification here on the right, and then we want to go to more and set the neighborhood size to one. So that seems to be a nice value for getting sort of nice, somewhat smooth posterior maps and a little bit more sensitive to texture than not using any neighborhood features. I'm going to close this. And so where we're going to spend the most time is setting up examples of the different anatomical structures in this image. And really, the one that I find the hardest to define is what they call the non-enhancing tumor. So if we look at the coronal view in full zoom here, I think it's very easy to see here we have edema. So I'm going to paint some examples of edema. I'm going to switch to the paintbrush view. And I like setting the paintbrush to be round and brush size. Three seems to be a good choice, or five for larger regions. Um, the plus minus keys, or some key that, that lets you change the brush size, but I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head. Sorry, so I'm going to draw some examples of edema. Like I said, it's pretty easy to see here between the flare and the T2, you can see this kind of spreading out of the edema. It's a little bit here too. Um, we don't need to draw tons and tons of examples. So usually one, maybe two slices is enough. Um, we'll have a chance to draw more examples if we sort of see problems later. So I said the hardest part is really finding what is the non-enhancing tumor. So it's something that's going to look like tumor on the T2 and flare, but it's not going to be enhancing. So some, some cases don't have that at all. And so then we just skip the, that label. But here you can kind of see when I'm moving my mouse. You can see sort of this is not enhanced in, in a T1 enhanced image. And yet it's not edema either because it's not it just doesn't have the intensity characteristics of edema. So I'm going to label it with this red label. Next I'm going to switch to my blue enhancing label and here in the T1 enhanced we can really see quite well um, the enhancing part of the tumor. So I'm going to try to draw some examples of that. 
Um, maybe in a couple slices again. And the last one that's in a tumor is going to be the necrosis label. So there seems to be this large region out here. You can trace. You can see in a T2 how bright it is. So that means fluid. And there's also right here in the middle of the enhancing region, there's quite a bit of necrosis as well. So, kind of quick drawing. So that's enough to initialize the tumor. The next thing we should, we should draw is just regular um, gray matter and white matter. So as you can see, I'm picking the labels here on the right, these little squares on the right, give me fast access to the labels, but I can also pick them down here on the left. So whatever is more convenient for you. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and go around and highlight. You know, this is normal gray matter, white matter. Um, likewise, we need to identify CSF um, ventricles. So an easy way to do that, so you don't have to, because they're so narrow, is to select adaptive brush and then just with the adaptive brush, we can easily fill the ventricles. Now I see I made a mistake here. I clicked in the wrong place. So what I can do, I can Command Z or on Windows Control Z to undo. And try again. You can also use the right mouse button to clean up whatever you previously painted. So two ways of undoing by using the eraser or by um, hitting the undo button. Finally, let's add some background. So background label, let's switch to maybe the paintbrush. It's just for the stuff outside of the image, so it gets its own label. And the last thing, we have this little, what seems like to be a white matter hyperintensity. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is part of the tumor, but let's say Let's assume it's not. So there's a couple of miscellaneous labels that we can use to just create an extra class. And I'll label this stuff using this miscellaneous label. Okay, so what we've done so far is create some initial examples. And now I'm gonna train the classifier. And that gives me speed images or posterior maps for all the different labels in the image. So what we should be doing now is go through the images and it's not a bad idea to switch to all the three different slice views now and go through the images and make sure we didn't make any obvious mistakes. Um, so there's no, you know, there's no sort of golden way to check this other than just going through and if you see somewhere we messed up then going in and sort of and, and, and correcting it. Um, I don't see right now an obvious mistake. Well here for example in the edema in the coronal view I see there's a little bit of a mistake. So right where my mouse is moving right now you see there's sort of what looks like normal gray matter that's being not being differentiated from the edema so what I might do is draw a little bit more edema here this looks like edema to me and also draw examples of normal gray matter next to it, just to help the classifier tell these two apart. So if I hit train again, seems like it 
adjust it. I'm going to make sure we didn't break it anywhere else. So there's a little bit of an art to all this, right? It's not it's not something we can just define how to do. But once I'm happy with the idea, I can switch over to looking at other labels. So did I get any of this non-enhancing label? A little bit here, you can see that this stuff is not enhancing and yet part of the tumor. My enhancing tumor core looks to be pretty good. So I think the easiest way to see whether the speed image makes sense is just to move the mouse around when you're in paintbrush mode. You can see the paintbrush, the little red rectangle. You can see it in all of the different slice views, so you, 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 you can tell that you're looking at the same point. So I find this easier than using overlays and other things. Um, another way we can visualize things though is if you click on the More button, there are these two little icons here at the very bo bottom. And the second icon is going to overlay the speed image on the other images using transparency. So that's another way you can quickly see how things align. Um, but I find it a little bit more hassle than it's worth. Finally, let's look at the necrosis. It seems to be doing okay as well. It's fairly reasonable. So, you know, my suggestion is not to spend too much time on these corrections. I mean, we, we have to sort of simulate what would be realistic in a research or maybe even clinical setting. So, you know, make, make corrections when you see obvious errors, but I wouldn't agonize over every voxel. I would put it that way. Okay, once we're happy, this is the major next thing we're going to do. So we're going to do the segmentation in these concentric circles kind of approach. So first of all, we're going to segment everything that's tumor related, everything that's abnormal. And to do that, I'm going to select the first four labels, edema, non-enhancing tumor, enhancing tumor core, and necrosis. And so what I've generated is a combined posterior for these four labels. And now I'm going to use active contours to segment those. So I'm going to hit the next button. It's going to think for a second. So I'm getting the progress dialog. And now notice that once I'm on this bubble uh, page, the label that's currently active is the first of those four labels that I combined. So that happens to be edema, which is what we want, because the, the edema is the outer uh, of the abnormal structures. And so we're going to right now start by labeling all of the abnormal structures as edema. And then next phase we're going to paint tumor on top of the edema. So we sort of start painting the edema, then the non-enhancing tumor, then enhancing tumor, and then necrosis. And you'll see what I mean exactly in the next couple of minutes. So we start with the edema. One bubble is usually enough um, because it's a, what we have here is a very contiguous abnormality region. Put next. And we're just going to run the active contour until it converges. So for running active contour, it makes sense to see all the slice views at once. And we can also use the 3D window. Um, fortunately, we never added any kind of a termination criterion for the active snakes. So we just got to sit here and wait until it doesn't change anymore. And yeah, that's it. Finish. Okay, so finish. We have the abnormal region segmented. Seems to be all right. So let's go in now and segment the rest of the structures. Now this is going to be much quicker. So all we're going to do is takes us back into the classification mode. So now we're going to segment all the parts of the tumor that are non, not edema. 
So non-enhancing pore, enhancing pore, and necrosis. We're segmenting those together, we're labeling those together, and we're going to go in and segment those using active contour. So I'm going to hit next. I'm going to put in a bubble. Hit next. And run the segmentation. Notice I'm not changing any of the parameters of the active contour. I don't think it's really necessary for this study. So here, seems like it's converged. Let's hit finish. So now we have the overall tumor and the edema segmented. Now we're going to Repeat the same process again, but this time we're segmenting the t enhancing tumor core and necrosis as a single label. Then click next. <coughs> and what we have to be a little bit more careful here is with the bubble placement. So we want to make sure that if there are the disjoint parts of this tumor that we don't leave them out from the bubbles. So before things were pretty contiguous, but now as we sort of go in towards the center of the tumor, we might have disjoint regions. So it's a good idea to place multiple bubbles. Just make sure that the foreground region is covered with the bubbles. Again, we're going to run the segmentation. So this part of it is a little bit tedious, a little bit repetitive, but it's light. Seems like some little piece that accidentally got included. Shrink it away. Okay. And finally, let's get the necrosis. So now I'm only going to select the necrosis. Hit next. And I want to be very careful with where I put the bubbles. Here, Let's just scroll through the image, make sure that there's no part of the necrosis where I did not put the bubble. Okay. Next. Run. Looks like there's a little bit here where I forgot to put the bubbles. So let's go back and add the bubble there too. You can change the step size to make it update a little bit quicker. And we're done. So finally, we can save our segmentation. Um, I'm going to call it poly01 um, to represent that being my first attempt at the segmentation of this data set. And one more thing, very important, do not forget this step. Let's go back to the snake mode and let's save our samples. So we're going to hit more, save samples. And I'm going to call this poly01 samples. Okay. And now we can cancel. So these samples, we're going to use them to see how many examples we drew in order to get these segmentations. 
finally we can quit. Or actually, before quitting, what we're going to do is, because this is training, let's just compare our segmentation result to the Brat's segmentation result. So I'm going to exit full screen mode. I'm going to go to the file menu, open a new ITK snap window, and open the same workspace again in the other window. But now I'm going to load the segmentation from the Bratz organizers. And you can kind of see that in this case I, I wasn't too far. So it looks like there's a decent amount of agreement. They have a little bit more of the red stuff, so we're at what I call red. Um, what they call red, I ended up calling edema in some places. But overall, the pattern is not too, too different. So we can quantify this. Let's close both windows. You don't need to save these workspaces. I don't know why these stupid windows come up all the time. Um, in the command line, if I go into the right folder, um, you should see I have a poly01 image, that's my segmentation, and a seg graph image, that's the um, segmentation from the organizers. With C3D, I can compare these pretty easily. Using a label overlap command, I can get dice overlaps for different structures. So you can see, for example, we have 70 Four percent overlap for, the, for edema, seventy-seven for the enhancing part of the tumor. If we we don't want to look at all the different substructures, we can combine some structures. So, for example, we just for each command, I'm going to collapse labels two, three, and four into a single label. And now we can see, so we got about 74.4 overlap for the edema, 85% overlap for the tumor itself. If we also collapse the edema label into just having a single label, the overall overlap is 94. So that's it. Um, now we just need to do this for a bunch of data sets and write a paper.